Welcome back to the Footy Panel, Bomber fans. We've got the coach, John Warsfold. With John, just going back to, to tagging, what's your general philosophy on tagging? Because we've seen some coaches do it a lot this year and other coaches rarely do it. Yeah, I, I suppose you're always weighing up um, how much you want to change the way your team plays to cope with a different midfield mix. Uh, if, if it's a midfielder, you're going to tag um, versus whether you think your midfield overall will beat the opposition midfield. So, for example, uh, Dane Beams had 41 possessions yesterday against uh, West Coast mm. and West Coast win by 10 goals. Um, Brisbane had more possessions than West Coast, but they obviously thought yeah, Beams can get it, but as long as Gaff and Shuey are getting it for us, the balance of our talent versus theirs is going to outweigh them, as opposed to bringing in a total shutdown player and Shuey or Gaff having to spend more time away from the contest. Um, so, yeah, throughout this year, we've probably used what we would call a run-with player three or four times uh, through the midfield. Um, no one's really picked it up. Uh, and we don't promote the fact, and I won't tell you which games they were in, but we were really pleased with the jobs that were done. But it wasn't bringing in a straight uh, shutdown player. It was using one of our midfielders who's got great concentration and the ability to match up an opponent, attack them and get off them and, and play as well. Uh, so you're, you're weighing that up at, at all times. So uh, even the, the, the great win we had against Geelong, we didn't specifically tag Selwood or Dangerfield. We believe we had uh, a style that would go into that game that would be good enough to overall win the game. Not, not just in terms of volume of possessions that one player gets, but in terms of balance around the ball, um, midfield, forward and back. That we, we backed it in against the Cats and we had a great win. So, you know, there's other times... Uh, I know Hawthorne had a similar philosophy against Dangerfield when they played Adelaide, when he was at Adelaide. He, would, he was averaging 38 possessions against Hawthorne, but Hawthorne were, were winning those games. So um, it wasn't about Dangerfield's possessions. It was about the overall team balance. So that, that's what clubs are looking at. And, you, yeah, we're, we're open to scrutiny in that. If you lose a game and a midfielder from the opposition dominates, people will say, well, you lost it because you didn't tag. And uh, that's, that's pretty... A, pretty basic view of it and it's an understandable one but uh, there's a lot more factors to it. Mm. Just one of the other sort of common questions coming through on Twitter is with, with Goddard and Watson near the end, is a priority to go and get another a big body midfielder maybe in this off season, you know name like Jacob Hopper has been mentioned for example? Um, I think uh, in terms of your midfield mix yeah you, you'd like to have some super talent constantly going through your midfield so yes we've got a couple of midfielders that uh, retirement is looming um, so we do need to look at either another young one coming through we've got a couple of we've got Parrish obviously coming through as a as a gun young mid we've got Langford really developing well as a as a young big bodied midfielder um, but if we can add another A grade midfielder to come through at about the right age that we'd be looking for you know someone that uh, is going to be hitting the peak of their career over the next, you know, from this year for the next six or seven years. Um, we'd definitely be looking at that. It's not helpful for you to say Langford has been unlucky with selection at times. No, so, no, no, not at all. And you are. Uh, how's he going? Is he far yeah. away? Uh, no, he's not far away. Yeah. No, um, you know, and I, I have to unfortunately say that to quite a few players yeah. um, in our VFL team at the moment. They're not far away. They're playing well enough to be in our team. Mm. The team's been tracking along pretty well. Um, How do you, you know, balance that? The addition of a couple more younger players with the team itself and success that looms as a possibility this yeah. year. Uh, that, that's that is always an interesting um, mix you're looking at. So uh, we brought Laverti in last week uh, when Begley had been knocking on the door for a number of weeks. So we're really weighing up uh, a kid who we're not sure what he'll bring. We, we were confident he could come in and, and he was ready for it, mm. but you're really unsure what, what he would have added. Um, whereas Laverti was, had hit his straps and we've seen him at AFL level yeah. and we were confident what he could bring. So. Um, it was a tough call because we missed an opportunity to, to give a young kid mm. his first game. Um, but Jaden's not on the, uh, you know, he's not on the verge of retiring. He's no, no, he's a young <laughs> player himself young that needs games. Yeah, developing player yeah. who only hasn't hit 30 games yet. I don't think so. Yeah, you're, you're balancing that up all the time, looking long term, but looking uh, for the immediate term as well. And we're in the mix to make the eight this year. And I think while that's the case, uh, we should be focusing on this year mm. and. Yeah. 
uh, a, a very slight eye to the future, but yes. let's focus on um, if we can play finals this mm. year. I think that would be something that, well, I know it would be something that all Essendon fans would be really excited about, and I know that's what our players uh, want to achieve. Mm. That's been a tough balance for a lot of coaches this year. I mean, Adam Sinter was getting knocked last week, so they haven't been playing kids, but they win a couple of games, they're suddenly in the top four. So there's so many teams that probably have to coach for the now this year because it's so tight. Yeah, yeah, and we're, we're hearing the commentary changing week to week <laughs> on which coach is under pressure. Next thing, he's in the top mm. four mix. Um, so, yeah, the good part is that the coaches um, just need to stay the course. They need to stay really focused and believing in what they're doing. Uh, unless they really believe now is a time to, uh, to try something different with their game plan because maybe they think they're not going to make the eight this year. Um, but if you think you're in the mix, I'd be saying stay strongly focused on what you believe is going to get you there and, and help you win finals. Surprise might be too strong a word, but on the back of little pre-season, Joe Danaher's year has been outstanding, hasn't it? And what yeah. he's able to do when you're even comparing to other key forwards. Yeah, no, he's... Uh, he, We've obviously known he was a super mm. talent. You know, I, I, I've said it before, but I remember watching his first game and he probably didn't have a massive impact, but you could see the class and the quality and the talent that the kid had. Um, he's uh, developed as good as any 200 centimetre tall forward has in the history of the game, I believe. Uh, and he works hard, he's got a great attitude. Yes, his pre-season was um, heavily interrupted, mm. but his attitude to making sure that he still was going to do the work in different ways mm. so he uh he was really restricted from a lot of kicking and jumping but uh he, he managed to get his running loads in and uh it's paid off for him mm. um so yeah that, that just is a credit to the resilience but also the commitment that the kids mm. got mm. obviously a lot of fans are anxious to know what joe watson's going to do next year given what he's meant for the club what he's been through is his decision a little bit different to how you would normally treat a player at his stage of his career or is it the same as you treat anyone else that's weighing up whether to go on or not? Um, oh, look, I would say uh, I would treat all players with the absolute respect around their thoughts. Um, and, but that ha and it has to fit in with the club. Obviously, the club is going to be around for a long time and needs to keep focusing on doing the right thing for um, its ongoing and sustained success. So there is a balance. And, and regardless of whether you've played 200-odd uh, games and, and been a champion of the club or whether you've contributed 40 games and given it your absolute all, I would uh, really treat every player with respect in terms of listening to them but communicating our decisions mm -hmm. in the end. The club has to make the decision. So the player has a, has a big say on um, where they sit and how they feel. Um, obviously, we're looking for players that are motivated, driven to continue to succeed, to show leadership. And if uh, Job's really keen to do that, we then say, great, we need to know that. Uh, now, where does it sit in terms of uh, the list that we want to go forward with um, into the future? Have you had a discussion with him as yet as to what he would like to do or what the club is thinking, or is that something left to the end of the year? Yeah, our discussion has been around um, leaving it to the end of the year. Basically, it's been around how you're tracking Job. Uh, in terms of there's a lot of talk. Obviously, I'm going to get asked a lot. You're getting asked a lot. Uh, where do we sit on this? And our view was we're both more than comfortable that... Um, once the season's wound up and Job can reflect, because I don't want him to make an emotional decision within an hour of finishing the last game of the season, um, let's sit down and, and work through it. Uh, if, in terms of list management, something came up that was forcing us to find an answer earlier, then we would have to sit down and say, here's some reasons why we need to um, get to the answer quicker. But right now, there's no urgency. Hmm. Now, Carlton this week, John and all that Bomber fans get their early Essendon home game tribute to Dustin Fletcher. You were at Carlton in a, a great time when Carlton Essendon rivalry was probably at its peak. What do you remember from the Carlton point of view of how they felt when they were going into a game against Essendon? Uh, yes, it was pretty passionate. <laughs> um, led by Stephen Kernahan, um, he was loud uh, pre game as, uh, as chairman of selectors. You know, he was pretty pumped up <laughs> for those games. Um, yeah, so it was probably, for me, my first year at Carlton in 2000. Uh, Carlton were going pretty well, and uh, obviously Essendon were going reasonably well. Um, it was big, yeah. Um, they, Carlton still, in those days, uh, any little motivational thing they could get where the opposition had said something, it would be up on the walls. And mm. um, Yeah, and I, I don't know... Um, 
2000, 2001, my two years at Carlton, what the actual results were. But uh, but I do remember the build up and and the. Um, the real intensity in the rooms pre-game. Has it changed now? You're talking about Sticks being very passionate. It's a, is it a much more measured approach where not a lot of ranting and raving now occurs? Um, I, yeah, I believe it, I believe that's the case. Um, yeah, the, we're together a lot longer during yeah. the week. We spend you know a lot of time planning, training, preparing for games. So really, nothing gets missed, mm. uh, and it's not like all of a sudden. We haven't seen the boys since Friday. We're playing on Sunday. Let's make sure they're up and about. Mm. You know, we'll see them the day before yeah. the game. And so it's, uh, it is quite different. Um, but, you know, I can tell you that uh, around the players, the intensity is mm. still there. The, mm. uh, you know, the volunteers that are helping out, the trainers that have been around yeah. for yeah. multiple years, they give me yeah. a look like, yeah. we have to win. <laughs> we have, this, is, this is important. Mm. Like every week they tell me, mm. come on, we've got to win. But yeah. those games they say, no. Now it's serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess a lot of the commentary after the weekend about Carlton is they're tired and they're looking forward to the end of the year, but then you have to go back to round three to know that when they play Essendon, they generally play pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, there was some talk about us as a club last year that we were going to be tired and limping mm. towards the end of the season and we were playing some of our best footy. So mm. we're not going to fall into that trap. Uh, we have to go out and continue to challenge ourselves to play... Uh, the elite level of footy that we, we believe will help us become a great team and we're working towards that and we've seen it in patches throughout the year and we've seen it where we've played long patches of it and had some great wins um, so yeah, our challenge is against Carlton to play the best footy we've played all year at the contest in terms of our ball movement and in terms of the way we defend uh, we're aiming to continue to get better and put our best performance out in the park this week. Now, Scotty was mentioning the, sort of the, the fire and brimstone of Sticks Kernahan. You always seem pretty calm. Do you deliver many sprays or you, you don't um, seem to be that sort of coach? Yeah, n- not so much um, verbal sprays, but I, I, I believe that uh, players are pretty clear on where they sit and where, whether they're uh, upholding the standards that we expect or not. Um, so, yeah, my, my method of as a person and as a coach is to uh, get them to understand that rather than giving them a spray for a couple of minutes and at the end of that spray, all they know is the coach is not happy. They don't really get a message from it yeah. <laughs> other than knowing the coach is not happy. So I really try to get them to understand where uh, they may have not reached the standards and how they're going to go about addressing that. That's, that's to me, the key part of delivering that message. Is there, what's the most annoying thing as a coach? Is it, is, it, is it skill errors? Is it breaking team rules? What's the thing as a coach that, that really gets under yeah. your skin the most? Well, breaking team rules is the absolute no-no. You know, that's letting your teammates down. That's, mm. that's saying that as a group we've committed to playing this way or setting up this way and if someone's not doing it, I, can, I know their teammates will give them really strong feedback and if they continue to do it, their teammates will be saying, we can't play with this guy, he's not... He's not uh, playing to the same values that, that we've all agreed to. So uh, that's probably the most annoying. The, the, the skill stuff here, yeah, that, you know, when every goal is so important and you think you've got one, well, you can see one, you know, you set up down yeah. the ground beautifully, you've got a man free in space and someone fumbles the ball or misses a handball that takes that player out of the play. Uh, that, that frustrates you. Um, but, you know, by the same token, you will kick goals where the opposition have done the exact same thing where they've. Mm. Uh, turn a kick over right in front of goal. We kick the goal and we don't sit there getting mm. frustrated or, you know, we just sort of say, great footy, well set up, boys. <laughs> um, good, great coaching. Um, yeah, so the game the game goes that way and, it's you know, I get as frustrated as anyone in the box and it's uh, I still get annoyed at myself even now after so many games involved that I get so uh, anxious or frustrated by skill errors when I know they're going to happen. Um but, yeah, it's just because we, we ride everything with the players and we want to see them do, play the perfect game. What about when the ball accidentally comes off Marty Gleeson's boot and they pay it to Now, that's yeah. frustrating. <laughs> yeah, well, again, no control. <laughs> Take your duffel coat off. <laughs> yeah. That was a wrong rubbish Yeah, and, and that's going to happen. And, yes. and we'll, we'll get one our way yeah. as well uh, at some point. And, um, yeah, so umpires don't get everything right. They're not perfect. Mm. Players definitely don't get everything right. Um, that's what that's what makes our game so emotional and uh, and brings the passion out in people and it's we, we don't want to ever be on the wrong end of it um, whether it's our error or an umpire error but the facts are 
if you go back and watch uh, a game from 100 years ago, there would have been errors yeah. made and they're still being made and it still frustrates us. But, gee, if we, if we do focus on all the brilliant things that are happening in the game... Um, you know, we should walk away feeling pretty good that there's, there's been some awesome footy. You know, that Buckley, you, you got last night's game, yeah, yesterday's yeah. game, Adelaide uh, on top of the ladder looking joyous at the draw. Yeah. Playing Absolutely. against a team Correct. that's out of the eight. The mm. team that's out of the eight have just drawn with the top team and they were shattered. shattered. Yeah. Just mm. because of the way the game had flowed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really, if you said pre-game, uh, it's going to be a draw, Adelaide would be saying, oh, we're going to be flat. Yeah. Yeah. And Collingwood totally would be saying, good. what a great effort. We're going to play brilliant mm. footy. Um, so yeah, but the emotion takes over and the, the ebbs and flows. Uh, it's uh, it's just exciting. I think um, Port Adelaide's win, where they got the um, yeah the pinched hit it yep right yeah, around the back yeah. to Robbie Gray. You know that yeah. just uh, you know Saints would be shattered. Port Adelaide, mm. uh, who nearly lost the game, uh, just on top of the moon. Yeah, it has been an amazing season. Just, just one on that. You know them both well. If you could have one of McGovern or Lever, who would you take? You look at me like you've got to take the forward. You've <laughs> yeah. got to take the forward. No, oh, oh, no, I'd go Lever. Yeah, no, I'd go Lever. Yeah, no, they're both exciting players. Uh, Jake Lever, I had more to do with yeah. when I was at Adelaide. McGovern was uh, just coming through as a rookie. Um, you know, I've had a bit to do with uh, Mitch's brother um, yeah. at West Coast, so I know them reasonably well. Jakey, I think, is just a you know, from the moment he stepped on the field, he looked a yeah. natural defender and uh, is playing at the elite level already at his young mm. age. Just finally, I know it's so hard to predict in this season because it's so tight, but do you feel now it's sort of minimum three out of four wins are required from here to, to give yourselves a chance to get into the eight? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, the answer is I don't know what it's going to take with the way the fixtures are going. Do you look no, that far I don't front? really, no. Yeah. Um, look, honest, you'd have to tell me how many wins we're currently on. I was thinking about it last night. I don't know how many games nine we've nine. won this yep. year. Mm. You, you'd think you've got to win 12, so yeah. that, that's three. Uh, there's a chance with the percentage and the tightness of it, we might have to win them all. Yeah. Um, who knows? We, we don't know. So, obviously, our focus is on winning all four of them um, and see where we sit at the end of the home and away um, as opposed to trying to work out now it's three and that's going to be good enough. Well, uh, I've got too much to focus on trying to beat Carlton this week. That That's going to be what we're putting all our energy into. Well, John, uh, thanks so much for your time. Bad luck yesterday. Good luck against the Blues and for the rest of the year. Thanks very much. Scotty, we'll see you next week. And remember, Bomber fans, get there nice and early. Big tribute to Dustin Fletcher on Saturday. Home game against the Blues, MCG. So expect another big crowd. And we'll see you next week on the footy panel.